perfect. What a team. I'm not going to talk much about teams, but we all need people, no matter how independent I thought I was years ago um, in my coaching business. So one thing, another thing I want to ask, this is not a networking session. I've had people in the past trying to promote themselves. This is this is us wanting to share information with you. Call it training, call it what you want. I, I'll give you some bit about my background for those of you that sort of don't necessarily know me. We've got a lot of people registered, whether that's a sign that it's the new year, whether it's the headline of the talk, whether more people are looking at how they can get business from LinkedIn and obviously your, your content and your posting, especially. Roger John, so that's a CB radio or VHF radio saying, welcome. Um, any questions you've got, please just note them down on your pads. And then at the end, I'll ask you to put them into the chat and Mary will take me through, and we will answer them. And the reason I say that is I'm expecting to answer a lot of the questions as we go through. Um, the webinars we've run because the content, although there's new content, LinkedIn constantly changes. Um, <laughs> I'm off in the tooth to pretty much know a lot of the questions that will get asked. But anything specific, just keep a note of it, and then we'll put get it put in the chat at the end. It's the easiest way that Mary can manage those <laughs> questions. Commitment to you, we will answer them all. Um, we're going to move the presentation with the content I want to share with you for the next hour. And then I'll be here for as long as you have questions, because there's so much that we're able to share. There's so many results that people around me, clients and contacts are getting that I, that I want you guys to be able to do it because the world's a big place. LinkedIn's a huge place. Um, there's enough room for everyone to take this and be using it because the reality is not many people do. So as more people come in, if you can hear me, just say yes without using the word yes. And we'll start in a moment. Thumbs up's good. Um, doesn't work for those of you that I can't see your great faces. It's always interesting seeing people on camera. I'm going to share PowerPoint presentation, so I'm not going to be able to see most of you. Um, if you want to go off camera, you can. What I just urge you to do is, is pay, pay as much attention as you can and take as much from this as you can. Um, because I'm going to cover a lot of stuff and I'm going to go fast and I'm very mindful of people's commitment to their time. So it's a few minutes past. We've got any more, a few more people in the waiting room and coming in. There's always people that join after the time, which always interests me. Um, we, we make notes of how often people join and where because we get questions after of people that have joined much later into the, into the hour and it always stuns me as to, well, we covered that if you'd have been there at the beginning. So I'm going to share my screen with you now, um, and I'm going to flip to the PowerPoint. Um, there is a great saying that says, never work with, um, what is it, animals or children? And I had, I had that, I had internet to that. Um, but in this day and age, we can't do, can't do that and choose not to work with animals. Um, but I can't choose not to work with the internet. Um, I'm presuming you can now see my home screen. I'm going to minimise the camera thing there um, so that I can really see what's going on. Okay, um, I'm going to I'm going to start. Other people will join the call. They always do. We've got a lot of people registered for this. Um, my style is I know I'm fast. Um, I know sometimes too fast and people miss things. I'm going to urge you again to make as many notes as, as, as you can. Any questions you have, jot them down, and then I'll ask you to put them in the chat box towards the end so that Mary can easily go through them. And we can make sure we answer every question that any of you have, uh, any of you have got. Um, I'm not going to talk about it. Jonathan! And uh, Mary, will put, Mary will put you on mute, mute so that so that we can't hear you talking to Jonathan, whoever that is. Um, I love Zoom. I love people on the internet. Um, it's here. You've got to learn to use it most effectively. Uh, but let's run into what we will what we will cover today. I want to show you how your posts can massively help you to grow your network and gain new clients. Fundamentally, most people on this call are in business at some level or other. LinkedIn so powerful. There's so much more you can do with it. I can give you lots of examples. But I want to make sure I stay on point uh, to give you what we can. And how to guarantee thousands of views of your posts. Now, that's a great statement, but we've proven it. It's there and, and it's immediate. One thing I want to 
Juice the bag is getting results quickly. I always have these. Yeah, right. Guys, if you can put yourselves on mute, save Mary the, the, the hassle, that would be awesome. Um, and then I'm going to show you the five steps to writing powerful posts and a lot of other things you can do to get power from your posts. And I throw this up because it alludes to some of the things I've just said. Apparently, and I'm there'd be people that might be far more detailed than me. Um, when I'm quoting statistics or facts, I'm more interested in the principle of it. According to research, our attention spans markedly decreased in the last 15 years. I don't know what it's like in the last eight, but I guess it's continuing. Um, way back in 2000, average attention span apparently was 12 seconds. 2015, it was 8.2. Wow, that's like a, what is that? Third, 30% reduction or 25% reduction. It's this fish goldfish in a bowl mentality isn't it we are our attention span is reduced because we're bombarded with stuff we're bombarded with so much stuff so this again is why i urge you to be focused on this room so maybe richard can help you whoever that was uh, to be focused and take from this what you can um because i know there's so much stuff in here that works uh, and i want to i want to be able to share it with you and i want to be able to share it with everybody and it brings me to this at the front end I'll talk about my background as a business coach. I call this a generalized principle. Like that since I uh, set it up. I know principle. Guys, can you put yourselves on mute, please? Um, I call it the I know principle. What happens in life, and you will all know somebody, and if you're honest with yourself, you could, I think we'll have, of us all, we'll have caught ourselves at some level, that when, we, when we're presented with something, we often will go, yeah, I know, but it doesn't work for me. I've just had two great examples this week with a client coaching client who needed to recruit and said, but everyone's telling me that you can't get good staff. I know there's not good staff about. It. Well, he got five people in a room within two days and he's recruited somebody, offered them a job within a week. And the other one was he needs premises. I've been told, I know there's no premises around. The moment you say, I know something is impossible. I know I don't have the time for posting. Posting, I, I, I know I, it's not a strategy for me because I'm not getting any sales. The moment we say, I know something won't work, we close our mind down to any possibility. And one thing I absolutely believe is anything is possible. There is always a way. And when someone says to me, oh, posting doesn't work or I haven't got the time for it, I will say, is it possible there's someone around you who is getting results from their posts and their content? Well, yeah, if you're listening to one of them and I'm going to give you some examples of others, that it's possible. So it's not that it doesn't work, it's about you haven't found a way to make it work. So I am going to cover some stuff that would probably challenge the way you're working, the way you're looking at things. It's at that point I urge you to keep an open mind and go, OK, how can I make this work for me? And I've just been reading a phenomenal book, by the way, called Be Your Future Self Now. And I, a lot of it I already know. The author is writing stuff that I've been speaking about for 20 years. And I said, OK, that's the I know mentality. Right, Andy Gwynn, what is it you can take from this and do differently to keep an open mind? So it's about keeping an open mind, guys. Appreciate it. And I know you probably can't see me. I'm supping water. Um, and let's... Just to give you a bit of framework about LinkedIn. LinkedIn was created in 20, 2003, same time I set up my coaching business. Apparently, and I've just updated this slide, in 2021, so sort of in the middle of COVID, there'd been a massive jump. There were 31 million personal profiles in the UK alone. Apparently, it now says 2022, there was 34 million. It's grown another 10%. And staggeringly, from 2021 to 2022, it's gone from 700 million personal profiles globally to 875. I had a guy, a great friend of mine, he retired from um, automotive industry. He said, I didn't even know LinkedIn was around because he never really needed to use it in his job designing bumpers. But is it still around after 20 years? It's actually growing. There's been a massive explosion of activity. COVID caused a lot of that. We know that. But actually what surprised me, and there's been a massive and there is still a continuing growth of new people on, on LinkedIn. It is the world's biggest online networking and marketing tool. That's the way I want you to look at it. And it's one of your biggest databases, and we'll touch on that even more. Um, and there's ways where you can get your con your connections from LinkedIn into your CRM. It it's a database. You've heard the saying, it's not what we know, it's who we know. 
Um, your network equals your net worth. I want you to look at that because interestingly, I said I set up my own business in 2003 as a business coach, business coach, a business coach. Um, and I've also morphed, LinkedIn has morphed massively uh, in the last 20 years and it continues to develop and change even in the last few months. Uh, in the same way, I guess I have, because that top photo was me in 2003. Uh, when I did my coach training, Nick Clark's on the line. I did it in Brisbane in the Gold Coast way back in Oz. Um, he and I have known each other for a long, long time. And, and from 2003 to 2010, my business was about coaching business owners to grow businesses and build and sell businesses. And I've been done a lot of professional speaking. And I also invest in property um, because it is about investing as well as just generating revenue and cash from your, from your business. And I think that's even more importantly right now with where the global economy is. As a business coach, this guy, um, I love him to death because he loved me to death, but he, he applied stuff. He said, it's an understatement to say that I've literally changed his life. Well, his wife said that to me at the time. And I said, that's fine, but it's your husband that took the action. Because there's another guy over there that you know that I've worked with in the same way. And he's, he's not done it. You've introduced me to a new way of thinking, opened up my mind to new possibilities, expanded previously limited horizons. It's about keeping this open mind. I now know how to run a business properly using your system. When we started working together, it was worth nothing. It was unsellable. 18 months later, he sold it for a million, having managed to turn it around. And I am his most raving fan and he's retired. And that was uh, that was a long while ago. And I put that in there because it is about a new way of thinking. Are we going to turn your business around today? No, but are, we going to get, are you going to have some things you can take away and do differently to get better results? Absolutely. And from 2010 was when I started looking at LinkedIn. I was on LinkedIn from 2003 because probably Nick and some of the other guys were saying, you've got to be on it. And all I did was connect with contacts and peers around the world. But in 2010, I looked at it. And my background was sales before that. And direct sales has always been um, my experience of course, since I was 21. And I remember sitting down in 2010, going on LinkedIn. I found a decision maker I wanted to get to. I connected with him. He accepted. I messaged him back in the right way. And we got a conversation. We made a sale. And I just negated, changed my life, my business especially. I went from no more cold calling, no more trying to get past gatekeepers. And I started using LinkedIn and then quickly started teaching my clients to do the same. And my business morphed into that of LinkedIn consultant, LinkedIn trainer, speaking about LinkedIn to all sorts of groups, still coaching clients as a business coach, uh, still speaking professionally paid and as part of my marketing um, and it's been investing in property ever since. And so for the last 13 years, I've been all about LinkedIn. Um, and this lady's wonderful. Her, husband, her and her husband are just phenomenal property investors now. But this, she turned around and said, she, guess what? She used to be an accountant. I invoiced £59,036.56 in client revenue as a result of one thing that she learned. It wasn't salesy. She did not like the, the concept of being salesy. So many people don't. A lot of ex accountants don't. I didn't send a million messages to get one lead. It's about a strategy and not just hoping clients will jump out at you. If you do or don't get LinkedIn in either way, I recommend I need to help you 10x your efforts, which is very cool. There are so many ways to use LinkedIn to put money in the bank. I love that because she's so right. And a lot of the work I do now is working with clients, delivering on their LinkedIn activity, making connections for them, messaging, engaging their connections to generate them leads, conversations, engagement. And this guy, Kevin, the bot man, he's done for you service, he started generating results immediately. He's been building new connections, messaging existing connections, which most people just cannot do every day, as well as a number of other activities that he never had time to do. He generated some ideal sales meetings within the first couple of weeks. So my style was, yeah, that's great, but you need money in the bank. Then he signed his first piece of work for 500 quid. I went, that's cool, but that's a one-off piece of work. And it hasn't given you a return on investment on paying me to do what I'm doing with you and for you. He just then signed a new coaching client within the first month, giving him an ROI worth 18 grand a year. It's great to have, and this is most important for me, it's great to have consistent daily inbound conversations for the first time ever via LinkedIn. And we'll talk more about that. Because what I want to, what I want to give you and what I want, the way I want you to look at things is this thing on the top is my formula for success. 
And those of you that are very techy and detailed, you might well hate this, but write this down. It stands for massive action multiplied by the right stuff. I'm letting those that write slowly, write slowly. Massive action times the right stuff times consistently equals results. Times consistently equals results. And let me explain that because this is this has been powerful in my life, my business, and so many other people's. Massive action. Let's take LinkedIn. You could be posting every day. Is that massive action? Yeah, compared to people that aren't posting. You could be sending out 100 messages a day to your connections. I know we can do that. We, we do do that. It works. That's massive action. But if your posts and your content is just disengaging, uninteresting, not attracting the right target, it's not the right sort of post, not the right stuff. If your messages, we know we're being bombarded by messages on LinkedIn. The reason most people get fed up is because those messages, in other people's words, are crappy sales messages. So if it's the wrong stuff, massive action times zero equals zero. So let's say you learn how to write content that works and you post every day, or you learn how to write messaging sequences, giving value to the reader. Massive action times the right stuff, but you do it once, you post once, and then you don't do it again. Massive action times the right stuff times zero equals zero. It's a formula. And one of the biggest challenges for human beings, I think, is consistency, consistently. We're not good at it unless you speak to a top athlete about their consistent diet and training regimes. So if you're not getting the results in any area of your marketing, LinkedIn, your business, your life, have a look at which of these areas do you want to work on. You can always take more action. I can't send out more than 100 messages to my connections a day because LinkedIn will flag that and paranoid about that it's not spam, but bombing and upsetting their user base. You can often always do more action. I can make more phone calls. I can send out more emails. But today is about giving you some of the right stuff that you can go and do. Because I also, yeah, we can take more action, but I'm also a big believer in le leverage and less is more. And then consistency is the key. So many people over the years, I've said, what worked in the past? Well, I was getting this. So what are you doing now? Oh, well, I've stopped. And I could shoot. Them. So the skill versus attitude. And I can teach you the skill. I can teach you how to put content together and how to use LinkedIn and the algorithm. But if your attitude is, oh, this doesn't work or I'm too busy or uh, um, whatever the, the attitude, I can't teach the attitude. And I can help people with it at some level. I use the analogy that I can teach you how to put a phone script together. But if your belief is around fear of rejection, you're never going to use that skill. And that comes back to the I know and keeping an open mind and looking at, OK, what skill, what right stuff do I need to learn? And I wanted to frame that up. Let me just touch on this as a sort of byproduct. But there's, pe there's so many people we've got on this call and so many people out there that you, you will be looking at other areas of LinkedIn. LinkedIn is awesome now. There's so many things that we quite uniquely have been able to pull together. Um, this was, uh, this was um, an event. Any of you on the line that are running webinars, or thinking of running webinars, you need to reach out to me and we can talk offline because you guys, most of you, in fact, about 50% of our registrations have come through LinkedIn activity. And this here was a post, this was similar, similar webinar. And you can see there, you got over 1600 attendees. And LinkedIn, if you do it in the right way, it's gold because all of those LinkedIn allows me, those of you that came through my LinkedIn activity allows me to upload those registrations into my CRM system. That's tangible return on value. That's tangible gold. I can now communicate with those people uh, ongoing. So if you're running webinars or events or thinking of, you need to reach out to me. I didn't, I wanted to mention it because we've sort of pioneered and really jumped on that and, and pioneered such a unique way of capitalizing on that in the last 18 months or so. So, Back to content and how you can get better results. Biggest people mis mistake people make in their business, I believe, from years of working with hundreds and hundreds of business owners, is that they often, most, have not learned how to market and sell themselves. The difference between marketing and sales, and I used to argue with my marketing manager around a board meeting when I was a, in management of a multi-million pound private company, um was that well nothing will happen i was taught nothing happens in business till a sale is made yeah 
but in order to make a sale, you've got to market to generate leads. The definition of marketing for me is generating a lead, is having someone express an interest in wanting to talk to you, work with you. Then you have to convert that into a sale. And the challenge people have is they've not learned how to sell effectively. That's why I used to call this webinar, and I will change the headline around over the, the year, how to get more leads on LinkedIn without being pushy or salesy, because people have such a fear of it. Here's the definition of sales for you to write down. Sales is professionally helping people to buy. If you think about it, at the Defy, there's probably nobody on this, on this webinar who would say their product and or service doesn't help their customer. If it doesn't, then you're in the wrong business. You need to leave. The reason we're doing what we're doing, whatever your business is, because if your customer buys from you, it will help them, whether they save money, get a better service, help them personally, help their business doesn't i don't care whether it's a bookkeeper or some software or i used to sell safety footwear whatever you're selling you know that if the customer buys they will benefit therefore your job is to professionally help them to buy so one of the things i want you to urge you to do i said you stay on the line towards the end of the call i have got an offer i want to make you i have got some things i want to show you and, and i urge you to lose the i know because the only reason people won't buy is they haven't had enough information to make the best decision. So on limited information, they'll often say no. And I want to give you enough information for you to be able to make an informed decision. Whether it's something you want, whether you want us to work with you or whether you've got something you can take away and use yourself and make a difference, I don't care which it is. It's whatever works best for you. But I urge you just to stay on to gather all of the information so you can make the best informed decision for you you need to be thinking about how you can get better at professionally helping people to buy whatever it is you want to give them hey yeah andy i want to talk about content and how i can get thousands of views and more business okay let's jump back into linkedin for me there's two sides of linkedin there's your personal profile we can touch on company pages any questions you've got about those uh, and we will we will touch on some detail around it but the key thing, I don't care who you are, whether you're the salesman, the MD, or what you are, it, you, the, what, the main side is your personal profile. This has to do three things. It has to get found. It has to give value to the reader. And it has to prove your credibility. I now think that third one is more important than it's ever been in this day and age because the world is so busy, because you are being bombarded with people out there. This is the marketing on getting your profile found, definitely giving value to the reader. Because the big challenge we have now, you might have heard this before, is that your prospects and customers are more educated than they've ever been because they can find your information. They will find it from LinkedIn. They'll find it from elsewhere. I had a guy contact me. He was a con connection of mine, never engaged. He said, can you help me with my team and LinkedIn? This is what I want. I've come to you because I've talked to other people that haven't really got what I wanted and clicked. He knew exactly what he wants. He want, knew how he wanted it to work. It was just about organizing the, the logistics. And that this is the right stuff within the formula for success. And then the second side of LinkedIn is your strategy. And your strategy is how you find, connect, and engage in the right way with your ideal contact. I use those words specifically because your contact for most of us might be a sales prospect, but I've spoken in front of the Chartered Institute to purchase and supply their contacts with suppliers. I've helped my nephew get an internship in Hong Kong. His contact was head of the financial firm in Hong Kong he wanted to work with. But for most of us, it's your ideal contact. This is the selling. This is the finding, engaging, and getting the conversation in the right way that's the right stuff this is where most people fail i'm being bombarded by crappy sales messages yes because those people don't know how to market and communicate with you in the right way and your aim is to get the conversation offline as quickly as possible you're not likely to sell on linkedin in fact i'm not sure you're ever going to particularly you're going to have for some people you might want to point them to a website my property investors want to point them to a website download an investor's pack so that they can track them and communicate with them via email. For me and for a lot of my clients, we want to get the, uh, the phone conversation. And I put this screen share up there because just to give you an idea, if you're new to LinkedIn, 
I searched in the search bar at the top there for the word purchasing manager. I just want to overemphasize this. And look, it shows three and a half million results. I haven't even got smart and looked by geography, company size, um, connections. I've searched for second tier. That means connections are my connections. Because if you look at this, it says um, this guy, Alvin, I could click on his profile. I could connect with him. I could look him up. I could find him. But actually, Thomas Power and I, are both connected to him. Thomas Power is a phenomenally networked, successful entrepreneur. Interestingly enough, he messaged me, yes, two days ago, because my automation had messaged him talking about this webinar. And we've just been talking about now property investing. I could ring Thomas up and go, how well do you know Alvin Ringle? I know him really well. Is his phone number? Give him a call. Hey, Alvin, Thomas said you might be interested in achieving X, Y, Z. Hope you don't mind me calling, by the way. He said your wife's been ill. How is she? Find, connect, and engage in the right way. This is how powerful LinkedIn is. If you haven't played around with that search, go search for your ideal connections. You can't do any harm. And LinkedIn is just powerful for that. If you're looking at doing this consistently in your business, then you've really got to, in order to do massive action, of the right stuff consistently you got to automate it linkedin is a hypocritical i have a love hate relationship with them but they're awesomely powerful but they've got so much functionality you just cannot do it like kevin said in that testimonial above it's things i've not been able to do before if you're looking at this as a consistent lead generation strategy in your business then you need to shout me and we need to talk through what you're looking to do how you can scale it up to take more action how we can create the right searches and messages in the right stuff and how you can consistently be engaging with your connections daily. So these are the two sides to LinkedIn. You've got to get your profile right and then you've got to look at what's your strategy to find, connect and engage. And what we're talking about today is the content opportunity, we're talking about how to get engagement from your posts. And we talked about direct engagement. And that's where you're messaging someone directly and beyond that, having the conversation. And then there's posts, which is what most of you are posting. And this feeds direct engagement in my book, because if my posts are engaging, people will look at my profile. By the way, one of the things I automatically do for me and all my clients is I will connect with anyone who's viewed my profile. But my connection message is slightly different. Hey, John, I noticed you viewed my profile recently. Just wondering what interested you to do so and how I might be able to help. Definition of sales, professionally helping people to buy. Now, I, I've written business that way because I've had people come back, well, one in however many. Most people are surfing around, haven't got a clue, but someone comes back and said, oh, yeah, I was just looking at how I can get a better profile on LinkedIn. Oh, fantastic. Do you want to talk about it? You need to be connecting with everyone who views your profile. The more people that see your posts, the more people are going to look at your profile and more people ask to connect with you should be connecting with them as well obviously because the content opportunity now this this number's probably out of date i haven't googled it for a while there's nine billion post impressions that's impressions on your feed on your profile per week just these numbers just stagger me and what we know is there's a high level of readership and i said there's a captive audience literally right now that was at the beginning of covid there's still a captive audience People are consuming content. People are reading what's, what's grabbing their attention around what they're looking to achieve, their needs, the problems they've got. There's a phenomenal opportunity now, and there always will be. And I think there was before we really got to understand this three years ago in our business with my team. Um, we just hadn't understood how we could get our content out there and how we could write content that really engaged. But here's what's interesting is less than 100, one in 100 people, less than 1% of those 30 odd million in the UK, however many close to a billion around the world are posting. And most of them don't have a clue. And here's where my little I know popped up. I go, oh, they must. It's been around 20 years. When I first started coaching, I used to cut people's adverts out of the newspaper and send it to them with a couple of tips on how they could improve it. And I remember saying to my coach, well, if there's a whole bunch of us doing this around the world, pretty soon every business will know how to write ads. No, because most people don't take action. This is what I want to urge and impress on you because I've just spoken at a property training event 
where 60 new property investors were investing 20 grand a year to be on this program. And I know the guy who runs it, great friend of mine, Simon Zucci. I love him to bits. I've worked with him for nearly 20 years. And I said to his audience, you can reach out to me when you've done some of the stuff we're talking about, send it to me. We can have a conversation. I can critique it. And the reason I say that is because statistically, one or two people out of this room of 60 will do that. And they're go-getting proactive property investors who have invested a lot of money in their education to go and change their lives. And it was right. I think there were 50 odd people in the room, three people did it. So for people that are not in that sort of powerful environment, it's even less. So only although, although our feeds look busy, it's actually a very few people on LinkedIn are posting. And here's what happened. Don't ask me how my tech team did this. Um, but we got hold of, I think, 30,000 LinkedIn premium users. Those are people subscribing to Sales Navigator or one or two of the other, whichever the premium subscriptions are. 30,000. Is that right? Yes, because we discovered 6,000 of them, 20%, were posting twice a week, but getting less than 10 engagements per post. What I mean by an engagement is a like or a comment. I can't see the views you get, but I can. it's directly related to the likes and comments. That's what I mean by an engagement. Someone who's engaged in your post, liked it or commented it. Less than 10 engagements on their posts. And it's about engaging in the right way. So let's look how we can how we can do that. In the old days, when I first started in my own business, I would say to clients, you need to touch your prospects. Your prospects need to see you probably seven to 14 times before they're likely to inquire and buy. You know, they probably need to see an email, your website, a direct mail letter, maybe get a phone call, whatever it is. Now you can add a zero to that and more with social media because we're bombarded again. Like, is it Facebook? Is it email? Is it internet website? Is it LinkedIn? Is it what uh, Instagram? What else we got? Somebody said to me the other day, uh, you need to be on Snapchat. I said, you need to boil your head. I can't possibly. I've got plenty of strategies in my business. We've got LinkedIn is a major one. We do a lot of email marketing. We do run webinars. We've got websites. We've got other things. You need to decide on the marketing strategies you've got to put into place. You've got to keep communicating with your audience. Those people that are worried about, oh, am I bombarding someone? Well, the bomb word bombardment is if you're hitting them with something they don't want that's not of interest bombarding them with shells if you're engaging and giving them content that's, that's relevant to them that's a value to them then you're not bombarding them but oh will, will it be too spammy no, I, most people don't understand the true word of spam but will it be too much no because most people won't see most of what you put out there so you can never message someone too much post too too much well you can that it will be detrimental to people seeing your post but you you've got to tell people what you do consistently and the great thing with content and posting is every time you show up in the feed it's building your personal brand i've had people say well i've seen you on a, on a webinar so i haven't run a webinar recently oh it was a woman who runs a business club in malta i said oh yeah i remember that and every time you post something it's showing up in your feed every time you're engaging on someone else's we'll come on to that and here's a powerful thing there are what I call LinkedIn lurkers everywhere. People are consuming content and are looking at your stuff. I had a guy book a call with me and I said, how have you come to do this? We're not connected on LinkedIn. You're not in my database. He said, oh, no, I've been reading your posts for the last three months now. I need some help. I said, but you've never engaged on those posts. You never liked anything or commented on it. He said, no, I don't do that. I'm looking for the information I need. And when I'm ready, I'll reach out to the people I want to talk to. So the people are lurking on LinkedIn. You never know who's going to see your content. So if you're not putting it out there consistently and in the right way, because you wouldn't have been reading my content if it wasn't of value to him. So this is the power of it today because there's so much more opportunity than there was when I set up my business 20 years ago. I, could, we couldn't, I couldn't do this. So it's about, like I've said, the right stuff within the, within the formula. Types of content you can share, feed posts, that's a post within LinkedIn that you push out. Now, there are some rules with it. I've got an incredible guy, and I know my colleagues sort of reached out to him. He's obviously very, very technical, and his team is, because he's just produced a 57-page report 
on all the algorithm changes that LinkedIn have made in 2022. So I've got my VA in the Philippines to condense that down into two or three pages that we can give to our members and our clients and focus on the 20% that's most powerful. But one of the key things was in the last year or so, LinkedIn, for the last 19 years, you had 1,300 characters maximum on your, on your posts. And then they've increased it to 3,000. Now, my fear with that is that two things. One is people will just start taking twice as many characters to publish the same tat, the same ineffective stuff that doesn't work. And the other thing to remember is that for 20 years, your readers have been conditioned, have, a, have an expectation that a post is short and punchy of 1,300 characters. So they're not likely to read 3,000. And actually, if you can't get your message across in 1,300 or less, in fact, I've just been, I've, I've been working with a coach of mine, friend of coach who's coaching me on writing even better content. And we're doing some Facebook stuff and the posts we're putting out are like 500, they're not characters, words. So they're actually a bit lengthier. Um, and actually we're bringing them down. So my, my recommendation is you keep them to the old level because that's what your reader's expectation is. But actually less is more. You want to focus on the right sort of content, not the length of it. Um, it's interesting. Use an image on your feed post. You get more views on your by using an image. And native view, video. There's a lot of lot of talk around video, and I've got to dig out these stats that this um, this analytical company did, because the recommendation was upload video straight into your post. If you put a link to an external video in the body of your post, LinkedIn's algorithm will suppress that. Because if you think about it, they don't want you taking people off LinkedIn. Documents and presentations within your posts get more views as well. Now, this is something that's changed as well in the last few months. But you can put your article, you load your articles, you can put any article into your feed post or a link to it. You put your articles on your profile and you can link people through and, and get them to read that. Now, remember, if I'm looking at your post and it's short and punchy, and then I have to click through to a lengthy article. I'm disappointed because I wanted something short and punchy. So I'm, I'm very careful how I use articles. And then commenting is the way easiest way to engage with your audience. It's included in LinkedIn's algorithm. We'll come on to that again in a moment. Um, you can comment on other people's posts. Now, what will come up with all of this is how much time do I manage with that? And that's one of the key things is about working out the 80-20 rule. What's the 20% of activity gives me 80% of the results? How can I diarize this so it's consistent? It's important to remember it's visible on your profile. And what I, well, the reason I say that is be very, very careful about what you're saying. I have a rule that I'm talking about sex, politics or religion, but actually you still, I, I'll never argue with anybody online. It's visible on your profile. People can see that. You've got to be careful on the perception you give and the perception people will get of you. But it's the best way to be considered a thought leader. I sort of struggle with that word. I don't want to just be a thought leader. I want people to engage with me. That guy who booked a call said, I've been reading your stuff for three months. Does he consider me a thought leader? Possibly. But actually, when he's ready to buy, they'll reach out to you. But the best way is to be participate in discussions not just on your own posts. You can create massive credibility. Remember, that's the art of your profile is to um, get found, give value, prove credibility. And also to generate discussions on your own posts is even the better way, I think. What we've done over the last few years, I've got a call uh, after this actually with my co colleague who is probably the best person teaching people to write content that works it's a style that's counterintuitive for most people remember i said most people haven't learned how to market effectively um, it's all about giving value you want to educate your your reader you want to inspire them but you want to give them value about what's important to them and so there's at least five different styles of um how to write a content that converts i call it a post that gets engagement um, and this is what we give our members, this is what we take them through, uh, and the same with my clients. You can write in the style of the hero's journey. You know, the guy went from struggling to this, 
I don't know if I'd use it with safety footwear. He did this, he did this, he managed to achieve this and this and this. Stories sell. As a coach, I was taught that facts tell. And I'm giving you facts now, but stories sell. And that's part two. The hero's journey is a story, a specific type. Stories are metaphors. I don't know about you, but I remember my grandfather telling me stories. I also remember having a conversation with a lady and I started to use the metaphor of football and there was just glazed the look. And then, of course, I realised she didn't buy into football. I switched it to netball. What do I know about netball? Well, I could still use the metaphor. And, and she went, oh, yeah, I get it. You can write in the start of the conversation. John was talking to his boss about X. His boss said this, the wife said that, and you can take them through how they solved the problem. Case study, testimonials, case studies I love because it just... Is third party testimony sells. If I tell you I'm brilliant, you'll go, so what, hairy guy? If Pete Uglow on the testimonial above said he's changed my life, I've achieved X, Y, and Z, or Kevin said I've got made, I've made sales in this time, you're more likely to listen. You can post in the form of case studies. I post a, posted a case study from a client, in fact, in the form of video. And I just said, you know, anyone reading this, if you want to talk about how you might be looking to achieve the same, happy to hear from you, just generated inbounds. And the challenge, I like that, but just be wary that does it fit your style? I can be very challenging. Um, <laughs> I know a colleague of mine, in fact, Peter, who teaches this stuff, put a headline and something like, if, you're, if your LinkedIn profile hasn't got a headline or something, your profile sucks. That will challenge some people, but it'll also grab some people to want to talk to him. Um, this guy who's taught us this over the last three years generates inbound leads for his business every week from his posts. So there's the content you write, but then there's also what I call the mechanics of posting. Use hashtags. I'm going to run through this very quickly. And again, the, the, the research in the last year sort of confirms this again. Hashtag use three is, is LinkedIn's optimum. I actually saw that somewhere on LinkedIn, in LinkedIn, from LinkedIn. Um, no more than 10, no less than three. I think the ideal is three. Um, and yes, go at hashtag an industry or a word that might be wide and have a lot of followers and a hashtag very narrow and specific to your target market, maybe. Definitely use hashtags in um, your posts. The algorithm will push that out to people that are following those hashtags. I've mentioned that if you put external URL links in the body of your post, the algorithm will suppress that post because LinkedIn doesn't want you pushing people off their platform onto other platforms or your websites. And then tagging people. And I've said there's people on this call that have been here before and great. Hopefully the stuff you missed before, uh, maybe other stuff that I've put in here, because I had a client from our post party club who'd been in there weeks and months and said, um, I didn't realize I could tag other people. And it's powerful, but tag someone who's got a lot of followers, someone you're connected to, someone with influence and mention them, don't just tag them and certainly don't tag a whole load of people. When my name's tagged with a whole load of people, I think it's crass. I don't even read the stuff. But when I go, oh, by the way, here's something I'm talking about. And it was at Brad Sugars who taught me this 20 years ago and, and I still love him for it. If he sees that in his feed and then he comments and it goes out to his network, it can be awesome. And we've had clients where they've just had astounding results with that. Apparently, statistics show that more people will look at your profile, uh, sorry, your post, if you've got emojis, it stuns me. But hey, if that's what people do, use them. It's about making this work for you. And, and those mechanics there really related to LinkedIn's algorithm, the feed formula. Let me to go back a step. LinkedIn wants you to produce good content. How does it know if your content is good? When you post, it will test it and push it out to about 10% of your connections, which is pretty poor. But then if you get, and the formulas, the algorithm sees that you get 15 likes and comments on your post that you have commented back on within two hours of posting, then the algorithm says this must be good content because this person's not only getting engagement from their network, but they're engaging back and it's happening very quickly. We will now boost this out to the rest of his connections and the connections, wider connections of those that have engaged on your post. And it said here, 10X my results. I did at the beginning, but we'll talk about some results. What that led us to do three years ago is develop the post party club. 
and this is where I want to explain what you can be doing. So I urge you to I urge you to, to to stay and just let me explain what's what's possible. We tested all of this. One of the things we did was, in fact, I met a lady the other day who said, "Yeah, I'm doing this with a small group up in my in my in my county." And I said, "We took this into corporate, who said, yeah, 'Yeah, we've got 15 management team. We can do this.'" And sure enough, it worked. They got a lot more views to their posts. But over a short period of time, it started to wane because the algorithm recognized that it was the same people engaging each time. And I've said that LinkedIn wants to see, wants you producing good content, but it also wants unique engagement as well as unique content. So we've created the post party club. Everyone likes some comments on each other's content. And I'm going to explain because I get asked, is this just like a part of explain why it's unique and it's far more powerful than that. Everyone replies back to the comments. You reply back to the comments you've had on your post or within the two hour window, the algorithm sees it and boosts it beyond uh, to the entire network and beyond, as I've said. Now, what I want to do quickly is um, when I say stop sharing, what I actually want to do is just show you this, um, which is a video I've alluded to Peter Wendt. Peter is the guy who's the master at teaching people how to write content. Um, and we work very closely together. And if I can move that thumbnail, I'll do it. There you go. I'm still sharing, aren't I? I want to play you this. Um, just let me know, Mary, that you can hear it coming through. It's just two minutes. Have a listen to what Peter says. Hi, Andy. Uh, Peter Went here. I just wanted to give you some very quick feedback on um, Post Party Club. All good, I'm pleased to say. Uh, just a bit of background. I used to belong to a engagement pod before I joined Post Party Club, probably back at the beginning of December. And in truth, it was, wasn't was a very well organised one. It was relatively informal. People were left just to put a link into a um, LinkedIn messaging group. And when people came, they came. And if they didn't come, they didn't come. And sometimes you'd find people catching up on likes and comments maybe a day or two after a post, which, of course, is completely ineffective. And I was in that group for a couple of years, probably. And you can see on the screen in front of you, I'm get, I was getting maybe 1,300 views, 2,300, so two, one to 2,000 views in there on the two posts you can see. Those are probably the last couple of posts that I did as part of that um, pod. And then I joined Post Party Club. I just want to quickly show you the sort of results I got. I do a weekly video. I was getting before three or 400, maybe 500 views of, of my videos. I'm now regularly getting over a thousand maybe 50 and then if you look at the, the number of views so here four thousand views on a post there's a thousand views on a video four thousand views on a post 1500 views on a video and the numbers keep going up seven nearly eight thousand views on a post seven and a half thousand views on a post 1200 on a video um and there's a couple of posts which i've got going at the moment two and a half that's a post i did this morning so that's still growing and i'll probably get to five thousand by the time it's finished so just a bit of feedback I say thank you very much post party club has been a huge success for me and i think that's because of the very disciplined and organized way that you corral everybody together do all of their engagement interaction on posts at the same time i think that's the key to it getting those 15 likes and 15 comments and then interacting with them within the two hours seems to, at the moment, be touching. If you want to show this to people in the Post Party Club to encourage them, that'd be great. Um, if any of them want any uh, to have a, a chat about you know, how I've got my content, doing what I've done, um, I'd be happy to have that chat too. But um, hope this helps. Speak to you very soon. Take care. Bye for now. So there's a couple of things um, that he mentioned there. He said, oh, this is uh, since December. Uh, and he said, for now, uh, it seems to be working for now. Well, that was two and a half years ago. Um, and it's still relevant. And yes, there's tweaks to um, tweaks to the algorithm constantly. I've said this company has pushed out a 57-page report of all sorts of changes. That's how fluid and dynamic LinkedIn, and it's still working and people are getting massive amounts of views. And what we've done is built the tech 
ability to be able to do that so you have random unique engagement from other members that's the uniqueness and we built the technology where it's all done within a within a, within its own portal because what it means you'll be able to do is raise your profile and credibility remember the lurkers that came to me it is a crowded market there is a lot of noise on there um there's a constant stream of posts and the best analogy I was given to, to getting stuff out there 20 years ago, I used to belong to BNI and I remember his longtime mate and client. I coached his son to build and sell the business. Um, and he was a web designer back then. And he said, um, if you imagine you write the best poster advert to promote something, and you stick it in your shed. No one sees it. Doesn't matter how good it is. And equally he said, you can build the best looking sexy website. But if you're not investing and paying in SEO and no one's seeing it, it's pointless. And it's the same with this. People are pushing out content, but unless people are going to see it, uh, and it is about raising your profile in a crowded market, generating thousands of views of your post instantly from, from post number one, you will generate more views than you have before. Um, that's what I love about this is that it's instant. Um, you can educate more of your audience about how you can help them, how you can serve them. You can get your name out there. You can get massive exposure of your content. And so ultimately, you can generate more leads and business. And here's what a few other people have said. This was week one, 860 views and climbing, even had some reshares. And there's ways to inspire your audience to reshare your stuff. And that's going to get even more exposure. Um, in less than 24 hours, I've noticed that I have more than 2,000 views for my post this week, Julie. Julie had never really posted before. And here's a, here's a screenshot way back. Was probably the beard's a little bit different. And, and I put it up because I got 4,799 views. I so wanted 4,800. I must check it back. It's a long time ago to see whether it, whether people are still accessing it. Because LinkedIn does some quirky stuff. We, we, had a, we had a client get a million, or I had a contact, friend client, get a million views. We couldn't understand why, other than he'd written about his F-type um, Jaguar and every man and his dog's got an opinion about cars around the world. I don't know. Um, so there's some blips. But I so wanted that to be 5,000, let alone four eight. But it's instant. And the post-party club, we developed this unique system. Um, what we discovered quickly, I get excited about getting results. When we launched this two and a half years ago, we'd done due diligence and research. I said we'd take it into corporate three years ago now and finally launched it um, two and a half years ago. And yeah, it worked. We got a bunch of members, we got a bunch of people who were posting, and they said, this is great, we're getting lots of views of our posts. But then very quickly, people were turning around to us and saying, well, it's all well and good, but I'm still not getting any leads. I'm not getting any engagement. I'm not getting any conversations to be able to make sales. And so we had to shift the whole emphasis of 80% of this, 90% of this is about how to write content that works. So my goal to, and my commitment, our commitment, mine and Mary's to our members on the Post Club, is to help them learn how to easily write powerful posts that work. Peter, when you've just seen, if you haven't written his name down, by the way, and gone to look at what he does, you're missing a massive opportunity. Um, I know Shane, his business, he's just awesome. He's taught us a lot about how to write over two, three years, how to write content that works, that converts. And it's easy. It's just a mind shift because human beings are so conditioned to tell what you do. You know, I see it still on people's profiles are written like CVs all about me, 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 instead of with the value, hitting the pain points of what people's problems are, hitting people with the solutions to how they can achieve what they want to achieve. And it's, how to, and it's easy to write powerful posts that work. And Peter, who you've just seen, generates leads every week from his posts. How to get consistent, remember Massive Action Right stuff, consistently get massive engagement of your posts. You raise your profile, you'll grow your connections and they'll serve you forever. You know, I've got, I've got done for you clients where we're connecting and messaging and they're getting, they're getting leads every week. And, and I say, tell me the value you're getting. And, and they go, well, I've got more connections than I've ever had. I can reach out to people. I said, that's great. But for me, I want, I want money. I want, I want the sale. And yeah, they make the sales, but actually they're growing connections. They'll serve you for life. I can't un overemphasize how much powerful that can be. And ultimately, it's about generating new business. And here's what I want to introduce to you for the last few minutes. So I urge you just to stay on so I can give you enough information, all the information for you to decide what works best for you. So I just urge you to keep the open mind. Remember, because 
Membership to the post, we created it as a membership, and Peter alluded to this, because there's a lot of pods out there that try and get people together. But all the research we did, we couldn't find any where there was the commitment. It wasn't happening in that two-hour window. And I've got experts telling me it's the same with YouTube. Launch a YouTube video. You then want to drive people to go view that video within two hours of publishing that video. So it's algorithm, it's the same. So there wasn't that commitment from pods out there. You know, they, they, some of them would participate hours later. You wouldn't get the numbers. That number of 15 is, is, is important as well. Um, but then they're in the same boat as we were three years ago. The, 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 the members of those pods are not learning how to write content that works. So membership of the Post Party Club right now includes uh, membership to the private Facebook group. I know it's ironic we're talking about LinkedIn, but actually we are close to. Mary's done a phenomenal amount of work about building an integral hub. We're taking away from Facebook. But in the Facebook group, we've got files and content on Peter's five five post styles at work boast we've got how to write profiles how to everything about linkedin and marketing because you can't just put your finger in the water and expect that the mark there the ripples go out i can't just work with you on how to write get com results from your posts without looking at the rest of your linkedin the rest of your marketing your sales strategy we've got all of that within the facebook group and sharing best practice a massive resource of everything business development I've joined membership groups, Facebook membership groups at 49 quid a month. This is included in Post Party Club because our members are, are talking to each other. They're even working with each other. They're sharing what's working um, and what hasn't worked, especially what is working. And they're just accelerating the results they're getting from their, their, their posts. The famous late Jim Rohn says, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. We're spending time with our members. Our members are spending time with us. They're spending time with each other. And then also, I can't actually see what it says on the top of that screen. Uh, Join the Post Body Club, only because I've got Zoom up there. Hey, um, videos and templates on how to create a powerful LinkedIn profile. I'll, I'll come on to that. You've got to get your profile right. What I call my magic messages that I use with my done for you clients that are investing thousands a month on how to connect and engage in the right way. I work with a, a sales team, and my opening gambit to them was what do you want to know about LinkedIn? Oh, well, we're getting to connections. We're connecting, but we want to know what to say then. I said, you're kidding me. You're salespeople. What do you do if an email comes in? And the way you message and engage with people has needs to change since COVID because of the bombardment. So I share all that about how we're creating magic messages that connect, engage, generate conversations for our done for you clients. I've, I put an ebook together at the beginning of covid how to write posts we've got i said the five there's actually seven most successful post styles um and then i've got others all those sorts of other content in there i've written an ebook years ago about how to generate referrals every business should be looking at that how to work strategically with other businesses to generate business how to network successfully and then there's weekly updates on all of LinkedIn's functionalities and take me more than a week to condense those 57 algorithmic changes that uh, that guy has mentioned. It's just new stuff every week. And then on top of that, twice monthly group coaching mastermind calls where our members come together. What is it you want to know? What have you done? What's worked? What can I bring to the call that's changed with LinkedIn? How can we give you more stuff around getting better results, not just on your content? good on your marketing so it's linkedin coaching linkedin updates sharing best practice content marketing and business development critiques of your content we've had clients go i've just put this post together what do you think we've got a collective group critiquing it and we get able to consume and how to develop your marketing assets those are that's content to send people whether it's checklists pdfs things of value to send to people that should be going out in almost all of your communication and i know i've certainly belonged and we've got other Mary runs a specifically at a group coaching um, program and membership called 90 Day Accelerator. Um, clients there are paying 500 quid a month, 495 to, to be part of that. I've been part of other group coaching mastermind calls at that. There's certainly huge value in, in that. I just want to be able to share all this. Why? Because I can. Because I've done for you our, our webinar coaching business, our other investments, um, are serving us it means i can share this because if this works for you then we work long and do you know what it's there to be had the world's just big enough so if you join post party club today full membership is just 97 quid a month plus fat there's no contract 
we have it's in a portal so there are the set post party slots per week same time every week around the world there's up to 44 different post parties you can join now you only be want to be posting once a day the slots are only on three days of the week monday wednesday friday and what i didn't mention earlier is if you post twice a day the algorithm will give preference to your later post over your first one why would you want to limit your first one when it's still gathering momentum so although there's 44 slots a week, depending on time zones and what works for you, um, and also if you're suddenly getting thousands of views of your posts and then you learn to write content that works, you could argue you only need to post once a week. I want the consistency in my formula for success. So we're posting two and three times a week on different profiles in our business. You can go to postpartyclub.co.uk and have a look. It runs through some more things. It's quick and easy. There's an induction process in there. When you join, you get membership login details to the portal to run the post parties and membership to the private Facebook group. I think a long time ago, LinkedIn has stopped, but there's, there was some one of our members, LinkedIn went through a period of um, sending congratulations, your posts in the top 1% of engagement on LinkedIn. Um, and members were getting that because of the post party club, helping them get that exposure. And this is a client of mine. He grew his connections by 779 in 11 weeks. He had 56 people download his investor pack, raised over 300 grand of new investors. So his, his communication and his posts and his content was about driving people to his website. And that's just powerful. Now, here's the big point I want to quickly make. I'm conscious of time. And then we'll go to questions. So if you've got any questions, drop them in the chat box for Mary. There is no point joining PPC, Post Party Club, and driving your ideal client to your profile. Remember the lurker, he read my stuff for three months. He would have been on my profile. He would have, he would have, um, I said, I connected with everyone who viewed my profile. He clearly didn't accept it. He looked at all my stuff. There's no point joining Post Party Club, driving your ideal client to your profile or to engage with you. If your profile is terrible, weak, and disengaging, you will miss opportunities. And it's just bonkers the amount of times I see that. So here's what I want to what I want to give you. And it is a special offer because it is only for this webinar. If you join Post Party Club today, at the beginning of COVID, pre-COVID, if we'd have spoken, I was predominantly selling. I had a 12-week coaching program. Let's work together weekly. Let me take you through all the nine points of a profile. Let's craft every part of that profile so it's powerful, so it gets you found, gives value to the reader, proves your credibility. You'll understand how to write it. It'll, it'll serve you elsewhere in your marketing. And let's go through all the different things you can do in your strategy. I've talked about connecting with who's viewed, accepting inbound. What about groups? What about recruitment? What about this? I put it all together. I used to set it for three grand, 12-week coaching program. And at the beginning of COVID, I've got other things going on. I worked with a friend of mine who helped me put it online as an online program. I could get it out to more people. You can have it forever. You can keep revisiting it. I might make more money if I sell more of them. It's relatively hands-off for me, although there's email support. And I'm selling it at 497 quid a month. I call it LinkedIn Mastery. There's five modules, 19 short video tutorials. There's templates on how to write connection messages, crib sheets on how to answer inbound messages, templates on how to write your profile, my magic messages I've mentioned, and I will give you unlimited email support. Why? Because most people don't ask for it. But those people that do buy it, they'll work on it, they'll go, I've, I've tweaked my profile, what do you think? If you take what is in that online course, you will find, connect, and engage with your ideal contact if you apply what's in there because I can guarantee that. So if you join the Post Party Club today for 97 quid per month, there's no contract on it. I will include and send you the LinkedIn Mastery online course that I'm selling online at 497, 400, 500 quid with those modules, crib sheets and everything. That's the offer I wanted to make. Why? Because I've got to professionally help you to buy. If it, if it, trips you over of the indecisive enough if it, if it motivates you to wow this is great to make the decision to join today it means you can start getting results straight away it's easy for us from an admin position with people on the call and following lots of people up now this is only available i appreciate we've covered a lot of stuff 
I appreciate that, uh, yeah, Andy, you, you've been pitching uh, Post Party Club. Why? Because it helps you. I know our members are getting new business from Post Party Club, and I can share so much stuff with you. Um, but I appreciate some people go, I, I need to think about it. I've just got sold into, and I love this sales process. I'm working with a, a coach and a high-end strategist on our webinar coaching high-end ticket sale stuff. And his process was wonderful. And I said to him, I'm not making a decision today because I've got to talk to Mary, but actually it's going to radically change my life and my business. I really need to get my head around how that works. This isn't as big a decision for most people. Most people say to me, it's posting's part of my marketing. It's a no-brainer and get access to it, fine. But if you need to think about it, this offer of the online course is only open for, what day are we on? It's, I think it's still Monday. It's less than a week. Um, Jack, my team will, will will email people, but I had someone last year said, oh, my mate's just bought in and he's got your your online course. Um, can, can I can I can I join now? And I said, well, no. I said, why why didn't you why didn't you join one of the webinar? I said, well, I didn't stay long enough. Once you got to the pitch, I, I sort of just went. And I said, no, I can't do that. It's not fair to my other clients. Uh, and I'm out there saying so it's not fair to those that make the decision now. So it's not fair to those out there that are buying it online. Um, I'm doing it because there's so much value in it. I want you to get value. And if it's if it's the incentive to make the decision right well, now, then great. Why? Because it's too easy for people to go away, and get sucked back into their business. Um, hope that makes sense. Um, We've got people all around the world in Post Party Club. There's actually four portals come together. So it's not just my members. You've got interaction from all sorts of people. It is truly unique. Those of you that know Brad Sugars, who founded Action Coach, who's worth 100 million, um, based in Vegas with the world's biggest business coaching franchise, founder of, he's using this because he's just seen the magic. I took this to him and he said, go talk at my global conference and introduce it. Um, so there you go. Uh, enough said any questions i'm going to stop sharing i'm going to come back off from powerpoint uh, and i'm going to sort of ask mary who's over there on my right to unless she can point me to the the chat which i've got um we'll go through the questions and any other questions you've got as, as we're going on i'm going to i said i'm going to stay here for as long as you have got questions i do actually have a call mary's got a call on the next hour uh, and I have a call an hour and a half, so it won't be that long. But when we ran this last year, we were on for like an hour and a half. There were so many people asking questions about Post Party Club, about posting, but actually hit me with anything to do with LinkedIn. Um, am I going to ask? Am I going to answer questions around your general business? It's probably not the right format. Um, um, what's the word? Platform format. And there's people on here that are also understanding that. So, Mary, what questions have we got? Okay, first one was from Dan. Is it recorded? Is this recorded? Yes, it is, Dan. Dan. Okay. Why do you ask, Dan? Um, do you know what? Um, will you get a copy? Yeah, I actually go out in some of my marketing. I, I said earlier, if any of you are running webinars, I know we've got all sorts of incredible people on here. I know some of you um, or thinking of running webinars. And actually, any business in the world should be running webinars. I've been delivering seminars and webinars for 20 years. It's a major part of my lead generation guess what you then promote those in post party club and elsewhere on linkedin i said if you're doing that you need to talk to me about it um part of my marketing actually somewhere says we're not recording this because what i've been what i've seen with webinars is we get a higher attendance rate um because the other thing we do is send it out to people that didn't turn up or people that specifically ask I'm getting, I'm getting very specific in, in business and marketing about only being able to communicate with the right people. So people that book to register and then don't turn up, how, how, how specific are they? But you've asked, and yes is the answer. It's a, it's a long answer, but yes. And, and I'd urge you to rewatch it, and I'd urge you to share it with people. This one is from Karen. Hi, Karen. Is it 9 till 10 or 9 till 11? Talk about the questions now. Is what 9 till 10 or 9 till 11? What meeting today today oh it was marketed out sorry well why is she asking the time well we're at 10 o'clock right i'm into any questions for as long as you've got questions she was asking what the time was um we marketed this as nine till ten with q a after yeah. um, okay. okay cheryl can we save the chat 
I don't know why, because it's mostly me. Um, why do you want to save the chat, um, Cheryl? She's on, so she can know. Um, Mary's not sure that you can send it, but I'm on a MacBook. If I hit command something and something else, I can screenshot stuff. So feel free to scroll down the chat and screenshot it. Um, wow. Knock yourself out. Um, it's mainly Mary communicating to you a lot about what's going on in the session. But I think that's the easiest way. You need to scroll down and screenshot it. So she wants to unmute and talk to you. Um, not really. I'm more interested in what do you guys want to know about Email. content, yes. posting and LinkedIn. Yes. Go on then. Okay, Cheryl also wanted to know, is there a benefit and an ROI to going premium? Oh, great question. Is there a benefit and ROI on going premium? Okay. Depends what you're looking to do. So for years, we, we have some incredible automation that allows me to connect every day with second tier connections, message sequence, then message my existing connections, engage with my connections in many, many different ways. Um, LinkedIn doesn't like it, but you know what? If you're engaging in the right way, LinkedIn are, are paranoid, I think, about quite rightly about you upsetting their user base. But if you're the, the crux of this is if your messaging and your content is engaging and of value, no one's going to get upset. So we said earlier that we're all selling something that's a benefit to our clients. So my, my duty is to get that message out to as many people as I can to give them the opportunity to look at it, to, to communicate with me and to buy. So I automate this. Now, pre that, which is about five, six years old, by the way, it's the same tech team, business partners of mine that developed that six, seven years ago, developed the post-party portal. It's awesome. Prior to that, if you'd have asked me, I said, I'd have said, I don't use premium. I can do a search without premium. The only advantage of LinkedIn Sales Navigator is their search function is far more granular. I can search by years in service, by number of employees. There's a lot of search filters, which is great. Pre that, I, for my business, I needed to search business owners in Birmingham or the UK. You can do that with the free, with your normal um, LinkedIn without any premium. Now, if you're going to start connecting or you are connecting every day with someone and you want to be messaging your connections, I don't know how many connections you've got, but the average CEO has a thousand. If each of those thousand have a thousand, you have a million second tier connections. If you want to be generating new connections and conversations every day, every week, massive action right stuff consistently you cannot do that manually i will connect with someone send them a welcome message when they've accepted i'll send a follow-up message a few days later another follow-up message i'm also messaging my existing connections you can't do that manually i've got a wonderful lady i worked with her years ago she's come back to us and said i'm spending two hours a day doing this that's actually a full week a full day a week she said, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the owner of the business. I can't be doing this. I need to grow my business. Can you automate it? Can you deliver on it for me? Now, in order to automate, we need Sales Navigator for the searches because we save the searches. But without it, if you're doing it manually in your own scale or small scale, then you can do a search. You can screenshot it tomorrow and go back in that search, scroll down and pick up the next profiles and screenshot them and go and connect with those people. Um, so if you're doing stuff on your own manually, you don't, I don't think you need sales nav. I've had, I've had LinkedIn in Ireland, which is one of their head offices, ring me years ago trying to sell me sales nav. And I can't personally see much other value. I've even had corporates who have bought lots of them come to me and we've leveraged it better through, through our system. If you're going to do it, scale it up. Hope that answers the question. Okay. Now we're moving towards the newer one. So you can scroll up to 11.08. Okay. And Martin, what's the largest number of members in one client for post pool party? I'm what's the post pool party? Post pool party? <laughs> Let's have a post pool party, Martin. <laughs> when I get a swimming pool, I'll invite you. Um, what's the largest number of members in one client? I'm not sure what you mean. Sorry. Now, if you want to if you want to text or come off mute and explain what you mean. If you mean what's the largest number of participants we've had in one post party, I, I think we've had hundreds, hundred. Um, we've launched some new slots. It's expensive for us to launch a slot because we have live tech support um, on during that. And there's a cost for servers and all sorts of things. We've just launched another one to help, I think, with the Australasian market. So if you jumped in there, there'd be a lot less. 
all I'm interested in is, are you getting the minimum 15 of your, what happens is when you submit your, you, you push it, you publish your post on LinkedIn. Then you put the link of that post into the portal, into post party, into the post party club portal. That then then randomly sends it out to 15 other of your peers. And in return, you get 15 other peers links to their posts for you to engage with. So it's randomized. So as long as you're getting those 15, now you can say, well, I don't want the same 15 every week. Absolutely. No, we've got hundreds of members around the world. If you meant how many people in a business can join post party, um, if you've got a team with lots of profiles and people posting, by the way, this algorithm is only sound on personal profiles, not company pages. So if you're a bigger company where you're pushing, you've got marketing department posting on your company page, we need to talk about the strategy and how you can leverage that. Um, if you are saying I've got a bunch of users, I've got a team of 10 people who want to engage in post party club, we can talk about the pricing of that and how we can leverage that. Just give us a shout. Martin also said, I'd welcome sharing this with new colleagues. So it sounds like he has got a team. Yeah, um, come off mute, Martin, if you're still there and mention what you're looking to, or just give me a shout and we can chat through your specific needs. When you say you're welcome sharing it to other new colleagues, if you mean within your business, do you mean this webinar or post-party club? If you mean post-party club, by all means, knock yourself out and share the webinar. If you mean post-party club, then yeah, as I say, if you're going to have multiple users in a business, then give me a call and let's talk about that because obviously we can work something out um there is when you go on that website let me get this out of the way when you go on the postpartyclub.co.uk you will see two memberships i've talked you through premium full membership and all the support in the facebook group and all of the fortnightly members calls the other standard what's it called basic. cheap basic membership agency was set up because probably what you're asking for martin was, was I've worked with a bunch of agencies who say we, we're delivering for our clients. So can we can we access post party club for each of our clients profiles, then they don't need all my support, they don't need all the membership, if they take one full membership, then they can bring all their clients on at the basic membership because they just need to access the portal. They don't get any other support help with content or anything. Um, what I don't want and we've got, we're finding a way to block this, um, is anyone who's not really got multiple users or an agency is going, ah, oh, just access your point. Unless you think you're really good at content, even then, I've worked with corporates, marketing departments, marketing managers, and I, I'll be as brave to say, I've never not been able to give them some of the value on looking at their content because we have just got from the content. So you'll see those two memberships. It's the full membership you need. I don't want you signing into the other one. And it's not that I'm bothered about the extra 50 quid a month. You won't get value from it. Remember, when we launched this, all we had was the portal. People got thousands of views of their posts. And then overwhelmingly, they said, yeah, but we're not getting any business from our content. It's because your content's poor. And that's what all the focus on full membership is. So if that's what you mean by sharing it with new colleagues, Martin, um, give me a shout. Let's talk about how that can best work. And if you're talking about sharing this um, webinar, absolutely feel free. Right. He's, um, he's in listen mode because he's, he's got a meeting going on in the background. Okay. He'll come back offline. Um, he'll come back offline. And he can think of many people in his company that would benefit from using the service as well as enjoyable. <laughs> okay, cool. But they won't have heard me. Okay. Um, I'll come on to that. Shall I? because we know each other. I know you've heard a lot of this stuff before. With Post Party Club, my business is fundamentally beneficial to UK clients only as it's travel cashback. Can we filter the views to UK only? No, but we can get smart with the mechanics that I talked about, with the tagging, and we can get smart with the way we write the posts. You'll get a load of exposure within UK profiles. So simple answer is you write it in your post you know i work with uk business uk people that want to achieve x um so absolutely we can make it work because you're national i've had a property investor who only wanted to source um i think properties or investors 
in somewhere like Newcastle or a, a real real micro geo specific area and, it, and, and you know they were getting results so yeah for you it, it would be easy I don't know we've spoken about it I'm not worried about that I've had people in the past go well I don't really want American profiles people in America engaging on my post I only want to deal with people in the UK remember the I know I said suspend it go with it watch what happens because that person in America has probably possibly got contacts connections in England so that's going to get pushed out to their network secondly and that happened one of their connections saw it went and saw the post and engaged with them and sold to them but actually the more connections you build and I know your business model and we've talked about it and I'm not suggesting you pay me a grand or so a month to build connections for you right now but if most of your connections are in the uk and you tap this algorithm remember the algorithm pushes it out to the rest of your network and the reality is yes you'll get some people from elsewhere in the world engage in your post party but you'll also get a bunch of people in the uk so it, it's absolutely easy for you yeah but it's a great question because i get it oh God. well you missed one from robert from uh, dan 1108. 1108 at Dan. Dan. Hi, Andy. Thanks. Post Party Club is run through third party automation like Lempod. I don't understand how Lempod works, but we've built what we've done is built the tech portal. But as I've just explained, you post your post on LinkedIn and then you submit the link into post into the portal. The portal then sends you 15 other people's links for you to go onto their post and engage. And in return, your your lit post gets sent to 15 other people for them to go onto your post on LinkedIn. Right. So when you say third party automation, yeah, we built the tech to that. It's not automation, really. What what I did when I first when we first developed this, while I'm impatient, I want results. What what I did while my business partner was developing this and beta testing it and all the rest, we did a lot of R and D. Is I went and rang 20 of my clients and network and said, "This is what we've got." Do you want to join? And I put it on a spreadsheet and it was a flipping nightmare for me to, for you to send 20 people, send me their links at 10 to the hour. And then me send you out 15 and make sure you've all got unique ones. And I couldn't scale that up, but I started running it and we started getting results. So we're not automating anything other than it's all, it's automating the sending you 15 of your peers links whereas what a lot of other pods do is they go hey we've got 100 members or whatever um everyone put your post in at this time and everyone else engage in it and the reality is they don't get the participation so as is unique in that it sends you random randomizes other members posts to come to you. it's not the same people all the time second thing is we have a rule if you don't participate if you if you register for a post party and then you don't participate, the system will send you a, a strike. Three strikes and you're out. We, I don't want your money, you're out of the club. Out of the, yeah, the club. Because you can't submit your post and people engage on it and you don't engage back on the, on your peers' posts. That, that isn't fair. Now, if you, if you register for a party and then go, oh, heck, I can't commit, you just go into the system and unregister, that's fine. And we've never, we've never had to throw anybody out. We've often the reason they don't participate is they've just forgotten to like on some of them so is it like lempod um i'm not sure how lempod works lempod's been around for a long time i don't know how much unique engagement they get but if you're writing content dan that works for you then you could probably test either of ours what nobody else is doing out there that we've discovered is helping you generate, learn how to create content, stay up to date with the algorithmic changes, stay up to date with the rest of LinkedIn's changes. Um, I, it's a post-party club membership. Oh, and by the way, you get access to our tech that allows you uh, random engagement on your guaranteed on your post that will get you thousands of views. I hope that makes sense, Dan. Um, Matthew Johnson. Hi, Matthew. How much of what you said earlier, i.e. the formula, would apply to company page posts rather than personal? Great question, because I've just said that. I've just mentioned it, haven't I? And I should have said it during the presentation. This algorithm is not valid on company pages. So if you are posting on company pages, we need a conversation. Reach out to me. Let's book a time. Um, in fact, Mary, if I don't know you can easily put my diary link in the chat. If not, just reach out to me on LinkedIn. By the way, guys, if we're not connected and there's a lot of people on this call, 
Um, and it certainly was a lot more. If you're not connected with me on LinkedIn and you don't connect with me, you're missing an opportunity. I have 20 odd thousand, 25,000 connections that become your second tier that you can then find in searches. Um, but if you're posting, um, Matthew, on the company page, reach out. Let's have a conversation about what you're doing, how you're doing it, and how we can leverage it. Because it's a common question. You've got a bunch of challenges with co company pages. One is the algorithm's not sound. It doesn't, doesn't work. So you're not getting much exposure. Your strategy for a company page is you've got to build followers. And I don't know how big your business is. If it's a big business, then yes, you need a company page. People expect to see it. You have to then get people to follow it, and then you've got to push out engaging content for them to read it, but not many of them are going to see it because the formula is not sound. So there's ways of let's publish it on your personal profile, get Post Party Club to boost that, and then put it into your company page. Now, one of the changes uh, with groups is if you're posting in groups, make sure you post it on your profile first. Don't shove it into a group and then post it. Alg the algorithm will squash that. I'm going off on a tangent. Company pages, you you need to post on one profile. So who's the champion? Who's the person that probably can do that? For me, for some of my clients, it's the marketing manager. I don't know how big your business is. Um, if you're a small business, I would say there's no real need for a company page. I've touched on webinars a few times. The strategy for webinars to capture the data is only sound if you publish the webinar on your company page. That's why an SME sole trader might want a company page. As a bigger business, yes, you want a company page because people will expect to see it. What I have said to MDs is if your salesman grows his connections with or without my help and then leaves, he takes his connections with him. So as a company strategy, you want all your team to inspire their connections to follow your company page. Then if the team member leaves, you can communicate at some level with those followers on a company page. But if you're just posting on a company page, it's ineffective. We need to talk about it. Your simple answer is you do it yourself on your, your own profile through Post Party Club, and then you drop it into the company page. And then you also get your team to engage on the company page as well, manually. And at 11, 11. Okay. Post, image, or video. Dan, have you seen any difference in terms of engagement and reach from a post with an image versus a video? Yes, um, and I can't remember the stats in this report I've alluded to. I'm literally getting it condensed down to share with all my members. Um, I think I think the reach on video is falling. I think you've got to be the average view time is is crazy. It's like eighty seconds or something. Um, you definitely want an image. The algorithm boosts it with an image, and more people view it because it's got an image. Um, so I'm, I've got an image with every one of my posts. You, you you look at my profile, you won't see that I've posted often. I had someone challenge it. Well, you're running Post Party Club. You're not posting. No, but Mary is, and my VA is, and we're doing other stuff. Um, you know, how much do you, what, what do you do in your own business? It's about the, the various strategies. Um, an image with every post. The algorithm um, picks it up. And, you know, a photo, if you're personal, I don't know the size of your business, Dan, but if it's, if it's a small business, it's you, whether it's your own business, whether you're the chief sales guy or whatever, photo is, is even better as well. And mix it up. You want variety. So I use video, but I'm, I mix it up. My ideal recommendation to you would be there's three post-party clubs a week. So you want a series. Mary, we've got a content planner. We've got a 12-month content planner and a 12-week um, content planner that you can set it up and You, I would, I would, wrote, I would vary my content, my style. Um, bottom line is go test and measure. I, I wouldn't use video every single time, and be very careful with video because I've had I've had members when they're new send me their video for critique or say, look at my post, and it's like you've got a five minute video, I ain't going to watch that. You've got to think about your audience. Um, the algorithm will definitely boost a post with both. It's boosting a post with an image. I would always use an image. And if you're posting three times a week, I might do a video a week, a video a fortnight, you know, go test it. Um, one of the easiest things I ever got, and I beat myself up massively from it years ago, well before Post Party Club, I did a video 
and he sat up on the roof terrace and I said, it was a, it was a case study. I said, here's what some of my clients have just achieved through automating and having me deliver on their LinkedIn activity. If you'd like to achieve the same, give me a shout. I had a stranger, we weren't connected. So how the heck he'd seen it? Remember the algorithm only puts it out to a small part of my network. I hadn't boosted it with Post Party Club. It didn't exist. And he, he just messaged me back and said, we need to talk. And he was part of a big, he owned a big business. And the only reason he stopped with me delivering on his LinkedIn after three years was because he sold the business and retired last year, end of last year. Uh, and that came out from one 90 second video without Post Party Club. And I thought, if I kept doing that, <clears throat> what if I did that through Post Party Club and thousands of people saw it? I've written business from, from a video, one post without Post Party Club. What if I took massive action consistently? That was clearly the right stuff. So video works. And this is the sort of stuff we work with our members on. Um, long answer again. Uh, yes, you will definitely get further reach with images. I use an image on every post. Um, video, be careful of it. And remember I said make it native video rather than a link to a YouTube video. Stephen Arthur, you've mentioned automations. What do you use and how do you use it most effectively? Um, poof, we probably need a conversation offline. Why are you asking? <laughs> do you work for LinkedIn? Are you working for some other automation? Are you interested in gaining more connections and, and, um, and business from your use of LinkedIn? How, how do you use it most effectively? I've sort of touched on it in that you want to be connecting with your ideal contact every day. So you want to be sending out connections every day. You want to be messaging them when they're connected. And I would typically send a sequence of three messages and I would always send some assets, some content. Hey, here's an article I've just written about how you can save money. I hope it's of value. You've got to change the way you message. Most people have a minimum of a thousand connections. Some have a lot more. What do you do to engage with those connections? Well, I post. Yeah, but how many people are seeing them? What else are you doing to engage with those connections of yours? Most people go, nothing. You want to be messaging them consistently. I will message my connections with, hey, um, those that change job, great resource. If you're after purchasing managers and they change jobs, are they likely to get another purchasing manager's job? LinkedIn will tell you when they've changed job. I automatically send them a congratulations message and let me know, sure you're busy settling in. Let me know if you're ever looking at how you can achieve X. Um, there's so many things you can do on LinkedIn. So our automation is, is, is bespoke. Um, I'd like to know why you've asked, Stephen, because it'd be interesting to know if you work for LinkedIn. Um, Maya. Maya. John Bottom, another meeting, she'll post it as a DM, but you can answer it now. Okay. I appreciate your time and help. Cool. Maya, what are your thoughts on using bolt-ons like Lusher, Octopus, et cetera? Had a prospect whose mobile I got from Lusher. I'm not sure. Okay. Asking me how he got his number. I'm a bit wary about it now, but it's such a great way to get around gatekeepers. Thanks. Okay. I'm not sure what Lusher is. Octopus is another form of automation. Let, let's get this out of the way. And if there's someone on here from LinkedIn, I'm, I'm happy to talk with you because... Where was I going? Five, six odd years ago, there weren't many bits of... LinkedIn doesn't like automation. It's not in their T's and C's, but LinkedIn, I believe, are hypocritical because in their T's and C's, they say you shouldn't connect with people you don't know. And yet every day, LinkedIn is sending you suggestions of people you might connect with. LinkedIn lets you have 30,000 connections. Can't possibly know them all. Um, and I come back to, I understand that they don't want to upset their user base. And the reason people get upset is because you're bombarded with crappy sales messages terrible posts of no content and crappy sales messages that's the crux of all of this i don't care about lempod and all the other stuff you've got to learn to write content posts and messages whether it's email messages whether it's a phone script you've got to learn to write to communicate in the right way to give value no one's then going to get upset now linkedin is awesome there's so many things you do you just can't do it um so way back, there were a bunch of plugins. LinkedIn are scanning for plugins and they are looking to shut them down and they could shut your profile down. I'm not sure whether Octopus is or not. I don't know what Lusher is. Now, I've had, not just on LinkedIn, forget LinkedIn, we've got some incredible ways of scraping data and capturing data from LinkedIn profiles, from email addresses, from um, what was the webinar 
platform event brights and stuff that's I, I don't know it i've got a team that do it for me but there's incredible ways of getting contacts i have had people message me going how have you got my email address i only use that for my linkedin password i haven't given it out elsewhere and i've explained how we've got it and they've gone oh okay so if someone's jumped back at you and gone how have you got my number i just tell them the thing i would be wary of is if it's a plugin into LinkedIn, LinkedIn can scan for those plugins. And if it's something that violates the terms, they they will, there's, there's dozens and dozens of types of plugin. What we're talking about is a plugin that automates your, your outreach, as isn't a plugin, it's on a remote server. Um, so it's logging in as if it was, as if it was you. Um, so the other thing I would say, Mayor, and to everyone, you've had one pushback, one person go, have you got your number? How many people have you engaged with? This is marketing. How many? I, I used to have a client beat himself up. He, he was ran a phenomenal business, life changing for his clients, hundreds of clients, and you get one complaint. You go, "I've got to change my business and the system." And go, no, how many people love you? How many people have said yes? How many people have engaged with you? You're going to get it. I will get in an email campaign. I will get people email back saying, "Stop spamming me." And I go, do you understand the definition of spam? You gave us your permission through Eventbrite to, to, to market to you. I love it on LinkedIn when someone says, stop spamming me, because you've connected with me. Therefore, you've given me permission to message you. It's not spam. People don't understand the definition of spam. So don't worry about one pushback. But I don't understand Lusher. I don't know what it does. Um, but if it's getting you people's mobile numbers, interesting. Um, by all means, if you're looking clearly you're advanced in marketing because the other thing i have the other challenge i have with linkedin is we automate everything else in our business that i'm teaching people and people have taught me to automate your business we automate emails we automate search engines you've got chatbots on your websites you automate stuff come on linkedin let, let us automate this in the right way as long as that content is good um so clearly maya you've got some good marketing strategy and systemization and leverage in your business Give me a shout and let's chat through it and see, see what you're doing. Next one is the last question from Dan, 1113. I've got it. Hey, Dan, and I appreciate your participation, Dan. Any tips specifically for growing engagement and reach on a LinkedIn company page? I think I've covered that, haven't I? You, you've, you've got to, if you're a big business, I'd, drop a message in here. Um, how big is your business? How many people in the team? Um, because if it's a one-man, if you're a one-man band, I've said you don't really need to use a company page. Um, if it's a bigger business, how are you going to get engagement and reach on a LinkedIn company page? I'd be looking at doing it through key personnel profiles and then dropping in the company page and having a strategy to get commitment from the team. Biggest challenge I get with marketing managers who are posting on the company page is we cannot get our team to engage on it because they want their salesmen to engage. Salesmen aren't going to engage. I was one. I've employed hundreds. They're busy generating leads. They're not going to take time out to like and comment meaningfully. By the way, you need to comment meaningfully on posts, and that's a rule within Post Party Club. You cannot just put nice post, nice post, nice post. LinkedIn will recognize that as just being the same and squashy. Um, I think you probably need to give me a shout, um, Dan, and um, let's have a chat through what you're looking to do because I think there's multiple probably ways to achieve what you're looking to achieve. So around 10 people, Dan. You've got 10 people. Yeah. Um, are they, okay. I think, give me a shout, Dan. Let's look at what you're doing, because I don't put a lot of value on company pages. So it's, if you're the boss, put it this way, Brad Sugars, who runs 100 million he's posting stuff out for his business i have members of post party club going oh brad sugars has commented on my post and i go no he hasn't because <laughs> i know he doesn't touch his profile but his v his pa will be doing it or one of his team members will be doing it that's the way to do it um and actually with 10 team members I'm, I'm not sure what you need to be growing with a company page and if it's your business it's you that we need to be growing your connections so give me a shout. Let's talk about it because post party club. If you're if you're publishing content and posts, you you should be getting massive results. Um, okay, I've, I've got it. Um, Nick Clark's jumping off. Great, and 
know who you are. Nick, looking forward to speaking with you. Um, Martin, we'll come back offline, but I can think of many people in my company that would benefit from using the service as well. Enjoy, Paul. Okay, look forward to speaking with you. I'm in listening mode. Okay, Sam, thanks. I would like to sign up for Post Party Club. My LinkedIn needs seriously updating. So I'm sturdy. Oh, he's messaged me directly. Ah, um, don't worry, Sam. You and a gazillion other people, and we can help quickly with that. Um, my LinkedIn needs seriously updating. I know it works, but I'm not maximizing opportunities at all. Again, you and a gazillion people. You know, I, I don't want anyone to underrate this, how powerful LinkedIn is. I've been in the bowels of it, and I've got some techie people around me that help me because I'm not that detailed, that techie. We have been in the bowels of LinkedIn for intensively day in, day out for seven years. I know I've been teaching LinkedIn for longer, but also we've been in the bowels of writing content and posts that work, that there is so much opportunity that most people are not maximizing it. Okay. So look forward to hearing back for your best regards, signing off. Okay, you to everyone. Okay, may uh, I'll have to jump off another meeting. I'll post my question as a DM, Andy. Uh, okay. Where else are we? Got to go, got to go. Uh, Stephen's not LinkedIn. Stephen, not, not not LinkedIn. No, Steve. he's not. He, you said, are you from LinkedIn? Why are you oh, good, not from LinkedIn, because I know LinkedIn don't like it, and I'm worried about getting banned by them or ending up in LinkedIn jail. Okay. Um, that, I hear that so often. I've, I've never had a client that I've worked with banned or in LinkedIn. There's no such thing as LinkedIn jail now. What they do is fire warning shots. Um, and actually, it's nothing to do with the connecting. I had one client the other week, and I can't remember the reason. And they, anyway, he got, he got reinstated with the day. Um, the, do not be fearful of getting banned. Um, one of the things LinkedIn did last year, and it frightened a lot of my competitors who are out there selling automation, saying we can get you hundreds of connections a day, is they restricted the number of invites you can send. And people went, oh, it's limited to 100. No, it ain't. It's algorithmic based. Because what I do is I sweat it with my clients. And it's about 200. So I can send, I'm sending out about 40 invites a day for my clients. And I want to see on a Friday, LinkedIn messages them and says, you have reached your weekly connection limit. We suggest you try again next week. And in the meantime, we suggest you engage with your existing connections more. Because that's what they want. They want you to engage with your connections. Now I want them to, I want my clients to reach that restriction on a Friday, not a Wednesday. So I sweat it and I want to see whether it's, is it 200, 190, 180? That's how I work with my clients. They won't put you in LinkedIn jail. And you've got, so Stephen, we need to speak because there's so much opportunity. If you are looking to consistently generate leads, jump into Post Party Club. It's a no brainer. We can start doing stuff. We can, we can, we can communicate with each other. But if you are consistently looking at it, you've got other marketing strategies in place in the business, you need to systemize LinkedIn because it's just powerful. I get inbound leads every day, every week from LinkedIn, and I'm hardly touching it. All I'm doing is responding to messages coming in because everything else I've got happening is automating it. Um, okay, so don't worry, you guys, about getting banned. I've never known. We've never had a client banned, um, and I don't know what you mean by LinkedIn jail. They can restrict your um, profile. I think I've had two people in the last... 18 months or two years and I can't remember the reasons my nephew when he, he's 26 when he was 23 LinkedIn blocked him and I wasn't doing anything with him for him he wasn't doing anything out of the ordinary in fact he was doing whatever he was doing it was minutiae certainly wasn't automating anything nothing nada and they asked for ID and they asked not just for ID they asked for a signed whatever it is affidavit by a lawyer or a notary and I emailed them and said, you are kidding me. I don't even get asked for that to set up foreign bank accounts and investments. Why are you doing this to a university student who's skint? You're asking him to pay 50 quid to go to a lawyer and get a signed proof of ID. And they went, that's our rule. And there was no arguing they had to do it. And it, they are bonkers in some ways. Um, so you, you can't end up in LinkedIn jail. And if you can, I think we've had two. And I can't remember the reasons. It wasn't what we were doing. Um, so there you go. Dan, any last questions? Thanks, Andy. Learning so much. Lots from you. Be in touch. You are welcome. I'd like to join up. Please send me some details. Joy. Okay, Joy, if you're still on the line, postpartyclub.co.uk. We will email everybody after. Remember that offer. Um, when you go on there, you just click to buy. We will see it. It will automatically send you joining instructions. When you log in, when you create your login to the portal, 
there are some brief training videos for you to watch tick to say you have before it will let you do your first post party perfect so thank you oh hi joy those those videos are how to how to operate a post party but then some yeah. tips on writing content and stuff and what i say to people is do your first post party or two and you'll have a bunch of questions and thoughts come to the group call or message me in the facebook group you'll get a log into the private facebook group as well and i look forward to sharing it with you because um yep i need to get myself off the ground <laughs> uh, easy easy we've got a lot we've got a lot of helium and some big balloons um, great look forward right. to that one <laughs> i'm looking forward to seeing you as well joy uh, <laughs> save that for another day all right Okay, I look forward to it. And any questions at all, you just you just shout us. But with it's, it's simple. We've systemized it. We've had people say the induction videos are short and great and easy. If yep. what are we on Wednesday? If you join today, well, you can do a post party this evening, but you can do a post party on Friday if you want to. Okay, cool. It's that simple. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Isla, anything else, Mayor? Uh, no, I've, I've done final call. Guys, all right. Here's, here's what I always say, although Mary's got a shoot in, in 10 minutes. There's still people on the call right now, a lot of people without camera. Um, and my psychology says it's probably for one of a couple of reasons. Either you've got nothing else to do, and those of you not on camera have gone off for a cup of tea or you are doing something else, or it's either I'm interested, what else is Andy going to come out with? Or it's, I've got some questions about post party. Club. my question to people would be, why wouldn't you sign up to post party? Club? And the answer to that is I'm not certain because there's some information I haven't got, but I've got questions. So a bit like an auction. I've got a couple of minutes. Any more, any last questions? What do you want to know about it? What are you worried about? Why do you think it might not work? Why do you think you wouldn't jump into it? What do you want? What do you want to know? Um, because if there aren't then any questions, um, I'm shooting off. Sam, um, thanks, Annie Mary. Very well worthwhile session. I'd like to sign up for Post Party Club. Oh, we've already read that. Yeah. Please put it again. Um, you're definitely not maximising opportunities. Is that right? That's right. Um, okay. Direct. Any questions? Any more questions from anybody? Um, it's there. The, the, the biggest two objections I get from people, not just buying into it, but sometimes when they're in is oh, the, the amount of time. There is a time commitment for each post party club. It isn't two hours. That's the that's the window to participate. Most post party clubs I do, I can do within 45 minutes. And by the way, while I'm waiting for you to comment on my post and me coming back, I'm doing something else. So you can leverage your time. I actually have my VA in the Philippines doing a lot of mine. I've had to teach him how to answer in my style and then if he's stuck with any I'll jump in so there's ways to leverage your time and actually the return you're going to get if you when you get it right is is awesome so guys any questions at all drop them in right now so sort of three two one see people shaking their heads uh anything you want to ask connect with me on linkedin it's not just about this and it's not just about posts and post party club it's how you can get more business from linkedin um in that case i'm gonna thank you for your participation for being here because i really appreciate it the numbers we get attend against registered we, we measure them it's pretty consistent i know what to expect it always interests me when someone registers to attend something and then doesn't go um i want to i want to thank you for your, your 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 attendance out of your busy days and your participation whatever you take away from this i urge you what to take to go and do something differently and then stay in touch because i love hearing about great results and i just wish you all the best in linkedin and your marketing and let's go make 2023 different have a great week everybody